Uh, welcome back everybody. And the first thing is, as always, uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. We're, we're now hitting 700 uh, plus, 700 subscribers. Got to thank all these people that have an interest in it. Thank you very much. Um, and all the comments, all the kind comments. Uh, there seems to be quite an interest in that. Uh, this video, up and coming video, this is all about the trio, the trio crossover. And the way I'm going to do it uh, is on a piece of board. Uh, we'll go into that. It's a passive crossover. I've also run these trios actively. That's another story. We might cover that in a later date, at a later date. Uh, but for now, um, I now have all the components that were needed. But I don't need that one. I don't need that one. That's for a different, it's just different type of crossover. Uh, it will run the, the trio. Um, but it's a bit more rudimentary. But we'll, we'll cover that at a later date. So what we have, in effect, is a crossover board. It's just a piece of board, and it's 9mm thick, 9mm ply, and I'm going to mount all the components on here. And these are the components for a single crossover. Obviously you need two. Uh, and we'll just run by the way I'm going to do it. In this case, you can do it your way. Uh, this is my way. Uh, just as a, a starter for 10 really and it's like this so we start off with a bit of board I've drawn this up one to one so it's scaled one to one so you can see there is the crossover all its component parts and this is a copy I'm not denying it this is a copy it's readily available on the internet if you go and have a look for this trio or the pure audio project trio and again i'll stress that it's an old design it's nothing new um, but this is what they come up with so you start off with i'm using a 3.9 mh millionary air core inductor that goes there we then filter it off with a hundred microfarad capacitor that's going to go there on this board. We have a 27 2.7R resistor. Uh, these are sand cast ones. I don't particularly like them, uh, but that's all I could get in 20 watt. But you could use, say, 1.3 ohm resistors and series them up. Uh, a little bit about that later. We've got a 33 microfarad capacitor there. A 3.3, that looks seeable, can you see that? 3.3 millionary again air cooled choke in effect, that's going to go there. And you'll notice I'm not laying it that way, I'm turning it through 90 degrees. There's some thought you should turn it 90 degrees plus 90 degrees. Now I'll do some homework on that, but for now we'll just drop it in there. Uh, if you lay it flat, they talk to each other, they interfere with each other, so that the field, uh, the field is actually, they're not banging into each other, they're not interfering with each other. And we've got a 33R, again, sand cast, probably be better with Mundor 4 Mills resistors. It's a 2.7, so 2.7, that'll go there. So this is part of the LPAD network on the tweeter. The bottom half is the full range unit, and this top half here is the 15 inches, 3.3, uh, there's a 3.3, .3 and a 2.2, like that. Uh, <clears throat> you don't use all three, you only use one of these, so if you use the middle one, it's 0 dB on the full range, so you're not attenuating the top end at all. But if you link this one, the 3.3, it gives you an additional 2 dB at the top end or the gain. You get 2 dB gain on the full range. And if you go to this side, it's minus 2 dB. So it cuts it off. So if it's a bit bright for you in your room, you can actually tailor this to suit. 
Uh, <coughs> so that's a quick explanation of the crossover we are going to use for this. And you'll notice it's on this drawing that I've done, but just happens to fit this board perfectly. <laughs> that was more luck than judgment. Uh, there are some critical holes or points. There are some critical points on this board that I'm going to go and drill some holes. And those holes will allow me to tie all this down. You can't bolt these down to fresh air. So I'm going to drill a 5mm hole there, a 5mm hole there on the board, a 5mm hole there on the board, and so on and so forth. And we'll just zip tie the components to this. Sorry, I'm hitting this camera. Zip tie the components to this bit of ply. Bit like that. Uh, these are probably just um, hot glue these resistors in place. These are a bit heavier, so I'm going to zip tie each one of those. And you can see the circuit on the hard wire. It comes in through this inductor, through the capacitor, down to ground via a 2.7, and back out. So this is going to be the plus. That's the plus, that's the minus, that's the minus. And here is your output. So I've got two plus outputs for the base units, two negatives. So this is a plus, that's a negative, plus negative for the full range driver. So uh, I can run this in two ways. I can run it um, uh, with a single amplifier or <coughs> I can run it in dual amplification. So that's why I've split this. You have one amplifier driving just the 15 inches and you have another amplifier driving the full range. But if you want to use the whole thing you just link out these. So you only have one, one set of terminals, speaker terminals going in here and it's feeding the whole circuit. But more about that later. I think you understand that. Uh, but for now, uh, I'm going to go and uh, drill some holes. I might paint this black uh, just to tidy it up, sand it down. And I'll probably put some feet on it uh, because this is a, a standalone crossover really. I don't, I've got no way really of screwing this to the chassis of the trio but i'll go away drill some holes paint it black and we'll start wiring it up i'll be back soon so i've drilled some holes painted it black uh, so we physically have to connect the banana speaker cables to something and what i've done here very simple uh, it's a bit of bracketry, U bracket, and I've drilled these out so that they'll take these sockets, 4mm sockets. I buy them from RS, but you can buy them from lots of other places. Uh, historically, I used to use these, these, um, I forget who makes these. Uh, but name and Lynn, a lot of people use these. Uh, they're they're adequate as a chassis four mil socket, but they're not. You can't do anything else with it but plug in a four millimeter banana plug. So I use these, and you can back these off. It's got a hole in it. You can put some clips in. And all I've done is screwed them to the bottom. I put a couple of bits of foam on just to add a bit of a foot. So we'll just go and fit fit these these other two for the base. 
and it just comes as a kit. Uh, that bit's that bit serrated. This piece is serrated in here, and you just offer that up like that. And here's the isolator on the back. Doesn't come with screws, but I like to use some screws, some brass screws, M4s, I think they are. I'll get a spanner and do those up in a minute. At a later date. So that gives us a physical connection to the crossover board and we can just come off of come off of here onto the circuitry which we'll go into a little bit later. Various ways of doing that you can just wind the end of a capacitor or an inductor on if you like or you can solder because they're brass you can solder them um, or just make sure you've got a gas tight mechanical seal. So that's that bit so far. Excuse my voice, I'm recovering from a bit of a head cold and my, my throat's a bit wobbly. Um, so the next bit is, is to connect our inductor. So that's going to go there, like that. Now these, all the, all these components for this crossover were all sourced from Willie's Hi-Fi or Willie's Audio I think here in the UK uh, and I will put a link below and uh, he does everything he does sockets and wire and inductors and Mundorf uh, resistors quality resistors uh, he does all these laminate laminate inductors uh, I've, been, I've been waiting for two of these in this this crossover network um, I've been waiting for 3.9 laminates but they come from Germany and unfortunately they're, they're trapped in France and I've been waiting for over a month um, but he said I've got some air cores better end result bit more expensive um, but we've got these massive 3.9 millienry inductors so there's, it's on a bobbin and there's a, I think it's a 5 mil hole and I'm just going to screw a 5 mil hole, screw a bolt through there and phys physically connect it to the board. When I've done that, I'll be back. Uh, so because of the weight, well it's quite a weighty thing, uh, I've got a, if you can see it, there's an M, M4 screw down through there about 12 mil long and I've got a penny washer on the back of it to spread the load there uh, but what's, what I've also done I've got a bit of double sided sticky tape here I'm going to find a little hole which is here somewhere that's going to go there then this fits down through there We securely, in effect, glue it, and then we're going to put a little nut on the back. I won't show you this. Put a little nut on this off camera, but a little nut, nut on the back of that. I'm working, trying to work around this camera. So excuse if I knock it a bit, and we just wind that one in like that, and that now is not going to move anywhere. It just so happens that with this drawing. That are produced these four mil binding posts actually line up with the input to 3.9 to the 3.9 here so this is there it is there and I will wind that round solder it on or clamp it up or whatever and that's going to be our positive supply to this 
So that's that step done. Forgive me if I'm rushing a bit, but time, it takes a while. I'll try not to edit this too much. Now we've now we've got to install our 100 microfarad and I'm using a auto filer 100 microfarad it's 250 volts DC and that's going to be held in place with some zip ties only four I think because these aren't long enough uh, but we'll get the idea so this end just so happens that it's going to line up line up with the inductor so it's going to be point to point fixings so we're going to go in through there I hope this is long enough anyway if not I'll have to go and buy some more because I haven't got any more uh, that'll go on there I think it will yeah we're ok uh, so I'll pull that through there a bit do another one. Like that. He goes in there. Pop him up through there. Like that. Gently feed him on the other end. Not too far. And then we can feed our, see that's gone too far, what an idiot. I've gone too far with those. Uh, I do believe that there's a way we can get out of this. So there's one in. Feed that down. Oops. Probably be out of focus. Something like that. And we need to give it a bit of a, a bit of a tug and a, a clean up. So we just give these a pull. Give that one a pull. So that's in there nice and secure. I'm going to just cut these tails off now. I'll leave these a bit longer just in case I need to pull them up at a, at a later date. There we go. Do that now. Just give them a pull. nice and secure and we can just connect those two together and move on. Uh, just a word of note about these big capacitors just be mindful be very careful uh, be very careful because if you're not careful especially when you store them you can end up with one of the legs snapped off. Now it is recoverable, but you've got to cut all this potting solution out of the way and reattach, resolder another leg. Um, but bear in mind these um, hundred microfarad I think they're about seventy pounds each, so um, it's a quite an investment. So look after them, especially in storage. Um, as a word of note. Uh, so, <clears throat> moving on, we've got a 2.7R, 2 ohm 7, if it will focus, there you go, and we know it's got to go into this location, so again be careful with the legs, just be gentle, and that one is going to go there. like that. So we get another zip tie 
I might get away with a shorter one on this. I'm only using one on this. I think I'll change these sand casts. These are these white ones are sand cast. Although they do the job, they're not really audio quality, but it's difficult to get better quality ones in the power. So these are 10 watts, so they know there's 20 watts, so there's 20 watts. I mean this is going to be driven by possibly up to a 400 watt amplifier or more or less uh, so you do need quite a bit of there you go that's not going to move uh, you could put some gunk underneath it if you want I'm not going to on this occasion uh, <clears throat> so that's that one in situ now we have a 33 this is a uh, Audin Audin Intertechnic from Germany and again this is the input to the full range unit so we're going to zip tie that one in if I'm finding zip ties I don't know I'll, I'll probably need yet another two another four to do this one Uh, yeah and it's the same thing feed it through zip it up feed it through these are five millimeter holes for those that are interested probably out of focus can I do it now on these two Oh, sadly, there we go. So we just feed that down there. I'm using two because I haven't got any longer ones. Uh, if you've got longer ones, you don't need to do any of what I'm doing here. Just nip it up. Don't squeeze the capacitor too much. Just make sure it's tight, firm, snug. I suppose is the word. Make sure it's snug. quite satisfied with that and again we can connect straight onto our input straight onto the capacitor on here on the terminal on the uh, binding post so I can just snip these off I haven't got my microphone on so I excuse the uh, <coughs> the distant my throat's going my voice is going Same thing, feed it through. This one's a bit tight because the metal bracket's in the way, I think. But it will go, I know it will. It's, uh, he says, or maybe not. Oh, damn, damn, damn. So, yeah. I've got to go and drill some holes, look. I'll drill a hole. I've got to go and drill a hole, so um, but we'll carry on. Uh, it's not going to stop us. We now have this 3.3 uh, henry air core inductor, and that goes on the negative. On the negative, so I don't know whether I can. Yes, I can. You can unwind these legs, which is handy. I'm going to have to do some jiggery pokery afterwards, uh, but that will go on there like that. And what I'm going to do here is put a piece of foam under that. Because what you don't want is both your air cord inductors inducting the same plane. So you don't want them like that. You have to rotate it through 90 degrees and many say you should rotate it another 90. I don't think it matters um, but as I said earlier I'm going to do some homework on that. So yes yeah, lovely that's smashing. 
So, what's some more zips? Some more of those zip ties. I don't know whether these are long enough to do, to do this. But we're going to find out any second now. This is DIY. So we're going to go. There's our little bit of foam, packing foam. There's the input to the inductor. There's the output. As always, there'll be a plethora of people. You shouldn't do it like that. Right, this is the way I'm doing it. You swine, it won't quite go. Uh, I'm going to go and see if I can find some longer zip ties. A bit of an intermission here uh, before I carry on and build up the crossover for you. So this is the schematic. Now you've seen the actual layout previously, but this is the schematic for a single amp layout. Um, plus and minus coming in. Goes through this 33 microfarad, 240 volts. Uh, drawn down by this 3.3 millionary as an air core. Uh, and an L pad to give you a minus 2 dB, 0 dB or plus 2 dB via these resistors, this little resist, resistor network in an L pad. Uh, the base is a simple, comes off 3.9 high power air core. You can buy all sorts of, um, from, all sorts from different manufacturers. You could even use one of these, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but it's 100 microfarad, 240 volt, and I'm using these as previously mentioned. I have I had these in stock. I had them on the shelf, ready to go. Uh, and that's drawn down a 2R720 watt, and the Eminence 15 inch base drivers are in parallel. So that's a single amp setup. But what we're doing, what I'm building, I have an abundance of power amplifiers. Luckily, I'm very lucky. So I'm doing a bi-amp system whereby you have one amplifier just driving the tang band. And you have another amplifier driving the eminent, the base unit. It's exactly the same circuit, but it's split, as you can see. Uh, <clears throat> so we go back to what does this what does that bi-amp actually translate to physically on a piece of wood or your, or your board? Well, this is it here. As you've seen earlier, there's your 3.9. I don't know if I can get these side by side. Oh, nearly not quite. Uh, there's a 3.9. Uh, there's your 3.9 there. You've got 100 off there. And it goes to ground via 2.7 there, and they just go off in parallel. So you have, I've put two little symbols there to um, verify that we're driving two base units. This one here, so we come in, we come in here through this 33, there it is, 33 240 volt. It's drawn off there to ground by a 3.3 air core there it is to there off to the ground there we then go up to a little l pad network so that's drawn <coughs> down and it translates into this which i started previously um, and physically there it is so we have a 3.9 we're going in here comes out of there Sorry, comes out the inductor into here, round here, and there's the output, and we're off to ground by the 2.7 here, and it returns there. So all, all I've done is copied uh, my drum down circuit, and you end up 
with this. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to end up using it, uh, these Soundcast. They're not the best sound quality. Uh, and this is just point to point wiring as you can see and I've used 1.5 millimeter um, insulated copper wire as the circuit. Uh, very basic, very DIY and there'll be lots of so you shouldn't do that, you should buy a new a proper PCB. Uh, I, I couldn't be bothered. Um, I like doing it this way. I follow it for me it makes sense to follow the circuit as opposed to you get big blocks on a PCB and I like doing it this way um, and actually in fact when you look at a commercial crossover in a speaker as I've done some of them are horrendous <laughs> they really are horrendous uh, by the by uh, so this is ready to go so we have of uh, base full range so both the 15 inches are going to come off here and the full range is going to come off there plus minus plus minus um, but if you wanted to do something slightly different you can use uh, a, a, a laminated a laminated inductor uh, they say they're a bit noisy in actual fact sonically I I can't really tell the difference um, you might be able to measure it but this Mundorf look just as long as you buy good quality high power but especially on the base um, this is the one that I believe uh, pure audio project use in one of their crossovers which is uh, there's another way of doing it so that's what I, I'm using you can do it cheap and cheerful if you like or cheap and that's wrong cheap and cheerful it's not cheap and cheerful it's another way of doing the same thing uh, so you have a a 4.7 laminate inductor you have an 82 microfarad capacitor and you have a 10 home 10 r 20 watt resistor so you just have three components and this connects to the tang band and these connect to the 15 inch base units in parallel it actually works i've tried it works quite well really um, but i think this uh, is a far superior setup. Moving on after a couple of technical de uh, difficulties I've had the um, the camera thought the battery or batteries that I'm using were um, discharged but that's what they weren't I've had to reload the software to the camera um, but <clears throat> you missed out on the build of this uh, you saw me in the previous section of the video place the components and now I'm just going to quickly show you how I make up the rest of the circuit and what I do uh, there's various ways of doing it you can use ordinary uh, wire uh, UPVC or whatever type of wire hookup wire to connect up the dots as it would be so <clears throat> there's not enough leads on the end of these components to actually join that so we're going to make up a little connection piece uh, which will allow us to complete the circuitry. And what I'm going to do, I've already done it as you can see, uh, what we're going to do is just cut this length of circuit, I make it out of uh, this enameled copper wire so because I've already done it I know the length is going to be about that long like that it might be too long just chop that off there uh, you just can't go and solder that to the legs of the components you have to remove you have to remove the element of the the enamel and the, the best way is to with a sharp knife or a craft knife is to scrape off that enamel all the way right to the end both ends and 
Uh, you can use a flame uh, to burn it off, but uh, I have read uh, that it is carcinogenic. And unless you've got a extraction system to take the, the offending fumes away, it's best not to do that. Uh, but you end up with a little link, just like that. Uh, and we're going to tin each end So I just clamp that in my little bench vise, chop off a bit of solder and we're just going to tin this all the way around, lovely jubbly, or oh, very nicely done. Tin that. You then go on and tin or re tin the end of your components. These have, these have already been tinned, uh, but the same thing applies. You would tin, make sure that this is tinned up correctly. Uh, and in situ, you would offer up this link or piece of circuit and it's a little bit fiddly and you solder it into place in actual fact what I'm going to do I'm going to remove that piece so whack a bit of heat whack a bit of heat So there's your piece of circuit or your link and we're just going to solder that back in place. You could use connection blocks like these here and make sure it nicely flows like that. That's that end done and if you're very careful That's that end done there. So it's as simple as that, and you go around making up your circuit, cutting off pieces to the lengths you want. Uh, and the way I bend it, or the way I make up the circuit, is say, for instance, I'm going to need uh, this piece to go from there to there. I'll lop him off a bit too long. You could measure it, but I know there's a bend there, going to be there. Somewhere around about there. You can bend it that way. You want to come up about there. Bend it the other way. That's roughly where it's going to go. And we're going to chop him off about here. Give a bit of extra. Chop him off there. Straighten it all up best you can. You can get as fancy or not as fancy as you like. But again, there you go. Uh, you would scrape back. The enamel as before da -da -da -da. you'd scrape back this end too all the way down tin the ends and in this case I just wound this as you can see I wound that round the thread and a couple of washers and I'll back the nut off and that's clamped in that position. It's as simple as that. This one is soldered to the leg of 
this here, this bit of circuitry, and it's just screw fitted, crimped gas tight seal straight into this terminal block. Uh, and you just work, work your way around the circuit until you end up with something that actually looks exactly what the circuit is. So that's a simple um, way of doing it. Not particularly simple. And obviously you go along and you solder wherever there's a, a joint, you solder it on. It, ideally it would be better to wind it on, but a, a good soldered joint is okay. So you have a mechanical and an electrical soldered joint. Uh, that's the way I've done it thus far. Now, this one is now completed. I've now got to go and do another one. Two is the next one. Exactly the same as the first one. Uh, so for this video, the crossover, this is now complete. And I'd like to thank yet again all the new subscribers. In This has taken me on and off uh, a week to do. It's a week to build up in my spare time. Uh, and with my head cold, it's not me back a bit, but um, it's now complete, ready to go on to the, the trio. And that will be in the next video, will be installing this into, wiring up and installing this into the trio as a whole, and a sound test as well. So thanks a lot for your comments. Thanks for the new subscribers. I wish you all well. Uh, this is Laverda, the implementer, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.